De Moivre's theorem states that r cos theta plus i sine theta all to the power of n is the same as r to the n multiplied by cos n theta plus i sine n theta, i.e. the index of n can be written as a coefficient of theta. We are going to look at two examples. Here is the first, writing sine 5 theta in terms of sine theta. De Moivre states that cos 5 theta plus i sine 5 theta is the same as cos theta plus i sine theta to the power 5. So firstly, we're going to expand the brackets using the binomial theorem. So the first term would be cos to the 5 theta, the second term would be 5 cos to the 4 theta i sine theta, the third would be 10 cos cubed theta i squared sine squared theta, etc. Now, we can replace some of the i squareds with minus 1. So in our third term, we have minus 10 cos cubed theta sine squared theta, and every other term contains an i squared or an i to the 4, so we can simplify. And we end up with either real terms or imaginary terms with a single i. Next thing to do is to factorise into our real parts and our imaginary parts. So we have three real terms and three imaginary terms. What we're interested in are the imaginary terms, because we're looking for sine 5 theta. And in our original statement, we have i sine 5 theta. So looking at the three imaginary terms, we can get rid of the i's on both sides. And then we have a statement for sine 5 theta. However, the question clearly states we need to write it in terms of sine theta, which means that we need to get rid of the causes. To do this, we use the relationship sine squared plus cos squared is 1, i.e. cos squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. For cos to the 4 theta, we use the same, but we square it. Then it's simply a case of multiplying out the brackets until we have our final answer of sine 5 theta equals 5 sine theta minus 20 sine cubed theta plus 16 sine theta to the power 5. For our second example, we need to look at some useful facts before we start. We already know that cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of n is cos n theta plus i sine n theta. Replacing the n with a minus n, we can use the fact that cos is even, so that cos minus n theta is the same as cos n theta, and the fact that sine is odd means that i sine minus n theta is the same as minus i sine n theta. Adding these together, we get the relationship that z to the n plus z to the minus n is 2 cos n theta. If we subtract, we get z to the n minus z to the minus n is 2 i sine n theta. And finally, if we replace the n with a 1, we have that z to the 1 minus z to the minus 1 is 2 i sine theta. So now we can do a question like this, writing sine to the power 5 theta in terms of multiples of sine theta. We start from what we just looked at, that 2 i sine theta is z to the 1 minus z to the minus 1. But we raise this to the power 5, and we use the binomial theorem again. The first term is z to the 1 to the power 5, which is z to the 5. The next term is 5 lots of z to the 1 to the power 4 times z to the minus 1. And as a result of that, we're going to get a z cubed with our coefficient of 5. And the rest work in the same way. This time we group them according to their powers. So we have z to the 5 minus z to the minus 5. We put a minus 5, so we get the same format of z cubed minus z to the minus 3. And we finish with a 10 z to the 1 minus z to the minus 1. And using our other result, z to the 5 minus z to the minus 5 is 2i sine 5 theta. z cubed minus z to the minus 3 is 2i sine 3 theta, etc. And we simplify and get 2i sine 5 theta minus 10i sine 3 theta plus 20i sine theta. But don't forget, this equals 2i sine theta to the power of 5. So if you multiply that out, we end up with 32i sine to the 5 theta. Divide through by i, and we get 32 sine to the 5 theta is 2 sine 5 theta minus 10 sine 3 theta plus 20 sine theta. And if we simply divide by 32, we get our final result of 1 16th sine 5 theta minus 5 sine 3 theta plus 10 sine theta. Now we're going to look at how we can use De Moivre to find the roots of complex numbers. In our question, we're going to find the cube roots of 194,220 minus 117,469 i. The first step is to find the modulus of this big complex number. We square the 194,220 and the 117,469, add them together and square root, like Pythagoras, 
and we get the square root of 515203743361, which is 226,981. But because we're cube rooting, we then find the cube root of that modulus, which is 61. And that will be the modulus of all of our answers, all of our cube roots. Now we find the argument of our complex number. As you can see from the diagram, it's going to be a negative argument. So we do the minus inverse tan of 117469 divided by 194220, which is minus 0.543959. To find the argument of one of our complex roots, we divide that by 3, because it's a cube root. If it had been a fourth root, we would divide by 4, etc. And we get minus 0.1813. So our first answer, the modulus is 61, the argument is minus 0 0.1813. Putting it together, we get 61 lots of cos minus 0.1813 plus i sine minus 0.1813. Then, we simply add or subtract 2 pi over 3 for the other two roots. Again, if it had been a fourth root, we'd be adding or subtracting 2 pi over 4. If we subtract 2 pi over 3, we get 61 lots of cos minus 2.2757 plus i sine minus 2.2757. Alternatively, if we add 2 pi over 3, we get 61 cos 1.9131 plus i sine 1.9131.